Hello everyone. I'd like to talk about asset packs. I'm going to use this asset pack as an example, but I want to stress that this asset pack is, I'm not trying to pick on this asset pack. This is the 3D Forge uh, Fantasy Interiors asset pack, Village Interiors. It's really quite nice. I got it on sale and it's definitely worth the price on sale. Um, I actually recommend it even at full price. It's quite good. Um, although I just kind of threw this together, so there are some noticeable gaps uh, in, how I, in how I put it in. Uh, so, all asset packs have the same set of problems, and I'm going to show you what those problems are using this asset pack as an example. But please remember that this is probably one of the best asset packs around for low poly fantasy assets. So, here you can see that I've put a lot of food on this table, and uh, that's good. They have a lot, they, ha they have a, a pretty decent selection of foods, but you know what they don't have? They don't have plates, or forks, or knives or tablecloths, or napkins, um, or dirty dishes, or anything like that. Now I can get those from another asset pack, and I'm going to have to. Uh, the problem is that the asset packs very rarely line up perfectly. Uh, if I were to use one of the asset packs uh, that I currently have, the, uh, the number of, of uh, faces on the fork would be roughly equivalent to the number of faces on the table right now. I mean, the, the whole surface of the table, all of these things. Um, so I'm going to have to go looking for an asset pack that roughly matches this in terms of being high texture quality but low poly. Uh, another problem is that the asset pack has all of these great walls, and I mean it's got a big selection of walls, but uh, it doesn't have any selection of roofs. So if you see, the roof is just the floor mirrored uh, and I had to do that because there was no roof option built in anywhere. And it's you, you shouldn't just make the roofs, the, f the, the floors mirrored, because roofs are not simply floors mirrored. Especially in a fantasy game, the roof is full of rafters, and it's tilted at odd angles. And that's really a vital part of getting a really strong feeling uh, interior. If you're in a first or third person view, then having those uh, vaulted roofs is just incredibly valuable. And they do have these. This here is actually an object, a pole that I put in. But their poles are uh, actually vertical poles. The horizontal pole that I've used here had to be stretched and warped to fit. And it would make it difficult to build a ceiling out of them. Um, so it's just that it's, a, it's another little gap. Uh, so they do all of the basics just right and then they leave these gaps. Another example is the beds. So this actually has a wide selection of beds and it's probably worth the purchase price just for these really quite nice low poly beds. But you know what they don't have? They don't have sheets that are separate from the beds. They don't have throw pillows that I can leave on the floor. They don't have crumpled up sheets. They don't have clothes that I can leave lying around or clothes that I can put you know in a closet. They do have sealed um, these, you know, sealed areas where clothes might be inside, but that's not really what I need. Um, anything could be inside of there. It's not a very lively thing. And I understand that all of these assets come at a price. If you want to put in these kinds of clothing assets, then you need to, you need to, you need to develop them. And in particular, the textures would be annoying to, uh, you'd have to actually make the textures and it would be a bit of work. Um, so I can't blame them for not including those things that would actually give life to this setting, but if you just use this asset pack, you're going to end up with a very barren feeling house. Even if you fill it with as much clutter as you can, it'll be missing the details that make it feel like it's actually been lived in. Similarly, it's got all these wonderful storage objects. Uh, in fact, this is probably the greatest strength of the pack. It's just got so many neat storage objects, but it doesn't have any water barrels. It's got barrels full of beans uh, or grain or whatever, but it has no water. Um, it doesn't have any sinks. It doesn't have any uh, crappers. It's, uh, you can't make this place feel lived in. You can just make it feel like some place that people store stuff in. It's, it's a very good warehouse builder. And it sounds like I'm slagging these guys off. Uh, 3D Forge, the makers of this particular um, asset pack, 
I'm not slagging them off. This is a universal problem. Every asset pack I've ever bought has these exact same issues, where it's got the fundamentals that that you first look for when you download the pack, they're all there, and they're all really strong. You've got a great selection of walls, you've got a great selection of tables and closets that are sealed shut, and storage bins and, you know, stairs, and it all fits together just wonderfully. But when you actually try to use it uh, in a finished sense, you can't quite get there. And I think it's probably just because the idea of asset packs are pretty new, and we haven't really mastered them yet. Uh, and it would be nice if I could go buy an asset pack and just take it from zero to completion. But right now, I find that the asset packs are really only good for prototyping. Uh, and in order to get anywhere near a complete asset for a game, I have to combine at least five different asset packs. In particular, um, toiletries are almost impossible to find on the asset store. There are basically none. Uh, the very few toiletry-related asset packs that I can find all are like Duke Nukem toilets. They're covered in really nasty stuff, and it's just, just disgusting. Um, and while that serves your purpose quite well, if that's what you'd like, in general that doesn't work very well for people who, for a home that's actually supposed to be lived in. Anyhow, uh, I thought I would just go over that weakness in the asset store and kind of cross my fingers that maybe someday soon we'll start to see asset packs mature a little bit and we'll start to be able to um, to get asset packs that actually cover all of the details that I need them to cover. Uh, I have also, uh, just to mention this, I have also modified this asset pack, not in a significant way, but in a large number of small ways. For example, these windows, um, I have applied an illumination texture to them. Uh, I'm very thankful that the team that created this asset pack left their textures as .png because it allowed me to quickly take their textures and uh, modify them for my own use, and I can show you that. So these windows have this texture here. Um, I don't want to do it like that, I want to just pop it up here. This texture here for their windows, and it's, uh, it's a PNG, so I could pop it open, and that allowed me to create a mask over the glass portions of the image, and that allowed me to create these glowing windows. Um, and that's great because it gives the impression that there is some light outside, but it's not enough to actually illuminate much. And then I put in these spotlights uh, with a very, very wide angle just to finish off the illumination effect, um, although that's kind of just a placeholder. I did similar things for everything that casts light. For example, these, this, uh, this light here, uh, these lights here, and, and of course the lights up here, and all the, all the various lights that come included. For some reason, the people uh, who built this patch, or this patch, this asset pack, what they really did with the lights is they set all of the lights to high intensity, ultra low range, and soft shadows. I'm not entirely sure what their thought was on that, why they decided that was good, but I inverted that. Um, I forgot to set this one to hard shadows, but basically, hard shadows are much faster to calculate than soft shadows. Uh, the intensity. I set it to a much lower intensity at a much higher range, so it actually illuminates stuff. Uh, now that will, of course, radically increase the load of the lighting on my game. So uh, if you're running this with a low poly in mind, you might have it, you know, an iPad game or something in mind. And maybe there's something special about soft lighting at short ranges on the iPad or something. Um, but on the PC, that is probably the worst choice you could make because it washes out everything at a super close range and doesn't illuminate anything at a long range which requires you to put in a ton of ambient lighting instead what I've done is there's no ambient lighting at all in this um, and it looks kind of nice I'll be tweaking it some if I decide to use it some more but it already looks kind of nice and uh, and that comes from using realistic light sources with realistic shading these light sources are permanent, so I can just bake this. There's no need for me to use hard shadows um, in this manner. I can just bake everything, uh, and I can get some really great performance by baking in some um, some more high-quality shadows. But uh, either way, uh, it was an odd choice on their part, and so I modified that out. 
And that's the sort of thing you're going to end up doing a lot if you start seriously looking into asset packs because you can't just live with what they give you. It'll never be exactly what you need, and I can accept that. I just wish it would be everything I would need to finish out the, the, the setting that they've chosen. Um, and again, it's not these guys' fault. Everyone does this. There are no rafters, there are no plates, there are no clothes, and there are no crappers. That's it. Have a nice day.